Hey guys, what's up? I'm James. I'm Fish. And we're going to be reacting to episode 16 of ReZero. Dude, the last one was crazy. <laughs> I think. I'm just, I'm, I'm getting too excited. There's a poltergeist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that was, it was absolutely wild last episode. Um, Subaru is, Subaru is losing it. And I hope maybe yeah. we'll see him. He looked like he recovered near the end there. So maybe we'll see a little bit of that here. Yeah, we also, um, you know, we, we saw a lot of good science in, in the last one, too. So hopefully we, we see a little bit more. Uh, a lot of talk about uh, heat transfer and stuff like that. I actually did a video on heat transfer. Uh, Horamiya one, I'll put it in the card somewhere. So you guys can, can check that out if you're interested, if you want to learn a little bit about how heat transfer works. Um, yeah, so that was interesting. And we also learned in the comments that I guess fire magic is heat transfer as well. Yeah, that. So, so initially I thought there was ice magic and fire magic, but it turns out it's just like uh, two parts of a whole. So I guess like you're just a heat engine, you pull heat away, or or put yeah. heat, dump heat somewhere, pull heat away. Uh, yeah. Which we we can talk more about in this episode, but like the big question is where did where is puck? depositing all that heat yeah where's the heat going i mean he is growing in size <laughs> yeah but I mean, he's not he's not i mean that's not converting mass necessarily or energy into mass uh like directly maybe but um it could be fueling his, his growth in some capacity possibly but in a way that seems like it's defying thermodynamic it's like he's converting heat directly into usable um like useful energy directly it seems a little broken uh, yeah, but it's magic. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we don't... Ma the thing is, will magic allow you to defy some laws of thermodynamics as we know it? Yeah, we don't care about entropy. That's, <laughs> that, that's what I was trying to get at. Entropy yeah. looks like it's uh, being destroyed here. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It, but, you know, that that's kind of... Um, I, I feel like that's kind of in line with what magic is, though, because magic is kind of thought of as, like, a... like mana right it's kind of thought of as like a life force yeah. and for a long time uh people not not everyone but it, it was sort of theorized that life itself was kind of a a negative entropy um, and, and locally it is yeah. right you're 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 creating order out of you know random energy and uh like mass that's you know you you're kind of reversing entropy you're creating order out of something um, but of course, in doing so, you're introducing more disorder into your surroundings. Um, but in your in your local area where your where your life is, you're it's sort of like a reverse entropy. Yeah, I mean, your body's default state wants to be like CO two and water, right? It wants to be yeah destroyed. But yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, which is actually kind of interesting because it's spontaneous too. <laughs> so it's it's interesting that you get pockets of lower entropy uh just randomly spontaneously creating themselves yeah just an interesting thought um but yeah so maybe maybe magic is kind of can act can act the the same way in the same sort of spirit i mean obviously it's it's a little hand wavy um but i think maybe there's some behind the scenes things we're not looking at like maybe the entropy is being like some maybe entropy is being deposited somewhere else like maybe in mana fields Perhaps yeah, be. or or a different dimension, or yeah, or you could just be. I mean, there you you could be just expending mana, mana, right, and introducing some disorder into that, so it can't be used to create magical effects anymore. Oh, that would be that's sort of hilarious. Like you know how you can have useful heat, not useful heat by like, so say you have a a a bottle at um a thousand C and a bottle at zero C. For example, and then you have a bottle at uh, 500, 500C, 500 500C. 500 the, the bottle with like 1000C and 0C, you have a lot more useful energy there because you can um, take advantage of that heat difference. <clears throat> Whereas yep. the two, but I, I wonder if the same case is there for mana. Like, I wonder if you're just like, if there's like really dense pockets of mana in the world and like not dense, and you, you're using the differential in mana to actually generate energy. That'd be oh, a, that's interesting. That'd be a fun yeah. theory, yeah. Yeah, I mean, 
you know, obviously it's, it's anime, it's anime physics, right? But it's cool to be able to think of how it could possibly work in, in real life. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm sure everyone <laughs> is tired of hearing about entropy and <laughs> wants us to actually watch the episode because there's, there's a lot of character development going on, I can tell. Uh, a lot of drama, so very yeah. excited to start. Um, we're we're going to count. Uh, we're watching on Crunchyroll, so if you're watching on, you know, some Blu-ray or something, or, you know, a pirated yeah, site, or whatever you, yeah, whatever you guys do, <laughs> uh, you know, it might be 10 seconds off. So, okay, and we're going to count down, and we're going to get started. All right, so we're going to go in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whew. Yep. Yeah, I want to see how he's going to get through this. Oh. Is he being led by hand, or is... Looks like he's leading. Wait, did... Did Rem survive? He died. Oh, okay, right. All right, Puck killed the must. Yeah. Yep. Russell Fellow. Yeah, interesting name. For some reason, I, I think of a philosopher when I hear Russell Fellow. Maybe there's a... <laughs> He's a finance guy. Is he going to ask for help? He has to, Swallow right? Swallow his pride. He, there's, I mean, he can't handle this on his own right now. I mean, maybe if he dies enough, possibly, but... Yep, he's doing it. Oh. How does he know? But how is he going to explain himself? That's a whole different yeah. issue. <clears throat> okay. I mean, that's fair. Give your life They're competing. <laughs> you get those cool little, like, blade things. Yeah, that's... but will you be able to pay off that debt? Yeah. <clears throat> nope. What? Well, if if they're doing it for free, right? It needs to be an equal transaction for it to not look really bad. I mean, Emily won't die. Yeah. Fair point. I'm glad. I'm glad he swallowed oh. his pride. <laughs> They're not gonna help. <laughs> <clears throat> he doesn't consider Amelia a. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's true, if she dies, she's out. <clears throat> it's true. She's really harsh, Even though. Beatrice. Why isn't Beatrice able to, like, defend the land? Maybe she only has power in the mansion? Yeah, that was stated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he smells like the witch. 
Yeah, I don't think she like knows the it though. Witch. You taste like the witch. I think only Rem and Ram know that. Because they're demon, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> what about the swordsman? Maybe the swordsman can lend. Maybe. Oh, Subaru, don't lose it. You gotta... Oh, I like the eye, the eyes that went. Yeah. Oh my god. What the, what that look What that look in his eyes? Yeah. Huh. Oh. She, yeah, but he has that for a different reason. Wow, his... She is so calm with him shouting like a maniac. Oh my god. Hey, the, the Sloth said the same thing. Like, he doesn't... Oh, she just broke him. Is that like her gift? <laughs> Fair. I mean, it would, it would seem like that, right? Because they don't know that he's experienced this already twice. Yeah. The inside of your mouth heals very quickly. Yeah. Oh. Second time she's done that. Actually, kind of makes me wonder why... Um, I mean, I guess mouth cancer, I don't know how common it is. I think it's, like, a little common, but, like, not more common. About what? Mouth cancer. Well, especially since the cell are you saying since the cells regenerate so quickly? Yeah. When people do a lot of tobacco and even if they drink, you're more likely to get like mouth cancers. So maybe that has yeah. some bearing there. Oh my goodness. Oh. He just has no allies available. Oh. He's gonna beg through the city for some overpowered person to pity him. <laughs> oh. He's gotta he's gotta find some way to bargain with these people. <clears throat> oh, one of the girls really like him, right? Or one of the um candidates. This one did, right? Cut. He's like a cornered animal almost. Like he has like yeah. nowhere to turn. He's pretty desperate. Oh. Uh. Uh. 
How much of his pride can he swallow? <laughs> and if, if it prevents me from dying, I'd like a toe. Subaru would do it easily. Yeah. He might be into it, too. <laughs> yeah, maybe. She's probably into it. Yeah, there's the only reason she would. Oh, Subaru, don't give me that. Kick him. Oh, I bet it's gross. <laughs> you know what though if he kills himself he'll be able to up his uh negotiation game pretty quickly that's a good point but at yeah. what cost it's much easier to to save scum like social things versus physical encounters yeah but like can you really kill yourself over a social encounter? That'd be rough. Yeah. Yeah, he has to kill himself and redo yeah. this. I just feel like, because if you can't, like, he's not going to be able to over overcome stuff physically quite as easily. Um, but he can, he knows, like, the triggers, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, we haven't seen his face. I wonder what it looks like. Oh, he's wearing that helmet. I hope it's like a Nusuke from Demon Slayer. It's like a super girly face. <laughs> <laughs> Can this guy help him? Please, anyone. Does he have like a dragon face? His neck is kind of weird. It looks scaly. Oh, you notice good. that? Like it had... I mean, it could be armor too, but it looked more like his neck. That's a good, that's an interesting point, and in the fact that it's armor. I don't think many people have neck armor. They really need more neck armor in all these because your neck is really vulnerable. I feel like a helmet yeah. that ends here and chest armor needs a lot to be exposed. Yeah. Usually, usually get a uh, like a collar though. Oh, this is the one of the merchants. The merchant's dog. Oh, yes, yeah, is the merchant. Candidate. Yeah, you can always negotiate with merchants. This is selling your soul to a capitalistic, just terrible person, though. <laughs> yeah, she looks a lot. But what kind of power would she have? Oh, I'm sure she has like mercenaries. But well, are mercenaries enough? I feel like you need like an overpowered like god weapon to fight these guys she has a knight i think too is it julius is julius her knight uh, I, I can't remember someone conspiring in subaru maybe Well, it's funny how she talks like with like a commoner accent. It seems like from this subtitle. Yeah, a little bit. This and that. Yeah. Was oh, this the night? No. <laughs> They're all wearing her. Uh, so these must be her people. All of them. What if she's like super overpowered? <laughs> that would be that would be nice. Like if she can shoot like a mega, would a laser like a laser beam? Would that what what magic would that be under? <laughs> Magical laser, light. Oh. <laughs> Why 
it wouldn't be heat it wouldn't be heat transfer magic for sure a lot of different things going on there I mean, it has to be light magic right for like illusions and stuff but like a pure laser beam of energy that's just light that's that's true literally light <laughs> yeah yes that's all it is <laughs> Uh, is this because of the uncertainty of having a new ruler? Probably. Oh. So they must be planning to do something then. Oh, she wanted information. Ah, oh, so that's... It. That's pretty shrewd, honestly. <laughs> nice. And, I mean, it's honestly fair. free for Subaru, right? It doesn't affect yeah. Subaru. Well, she wasn't going to be mad. This? I mean, she wasn't going to yeah. do it for free. I mean, he's under a lot of stress, I guess. Oh my god, Ugh. they're tearing apart. Well... Oof. Well. Oh, she probably is super powerful. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, they're really Subaru is not having a good time. No, he just keeps so getting bad. wrecked. How does how is he gonna keep it together? So yeah, I, I think you're right. I think he does zero here and then like redo these negotiations. I, he has to, right? But how does he hide his emotions? Like that's hard to do. He's an emotive I mean, guy. Yeah, you go through it enough, it's just kind of going through the motions, right? Yeah. How did, how did he not realize it's where all her people, they're all wearing the same stuff as the Mimi. Yeah, Subaru has, like, no spatial awareness, too. Like, what is he doing? What What is his ability? <laughs> He's tenacious. I mean, you have to be pretty... pretty strong mentally to be able to deal with all, you know, everything he has. I mean, he's kind of breaking, but still. Yeah. I mean, I think he's gone beyond what, what most people can do. Yeah. Rem is really sticking by him. Yeah. Despite he's her, well, he's earned her trust, right? Yeah. Everyone else, he just looks like an asshole, too. Oh. They're hard. They're not going to make it in time, right? No, or almost certainly not. I mean, he's going to die. Are they leaving earlier this time? Maybe they are. Uh oh. Oh, there's some sort of caravan here. Oh, this is the person that took him back in a previous life. Yeah.
Oh. <gasps> I wonder if Subaru can use that to his advantage. Probably explosive. Sort of. Yeah, what kind of oil is it? Is it is it like dragon oil? <laughs> Maybe dragon oil has like TNT. He bought some oil future. Oh, Subaru has a look in his eye. Yeah. Subaru, you don't have any money. <laughs> oh. Oh, he's going to try to get the people out. <laughs> she just carries that around with her. <laughs> and Big off they go. Money. Yeah. Oh, he's going to kill all these. He's going to kill all these people, too. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. She is demonized, though. True. Dark vision. Nice. Is that low battery mode? What is that mode? Yeah, I don't know. Mirai Tech. Yeah, how does he have so much battery left? Those phones standby could last like a month. That's a good point. Yeah, I guess if it's closed airplane mode, probably would. Yeah. So, so maybe that's a good way to um, age how long he's been here. He's, well, he's only been here as long as a phone would last. Yeah. Stand by. Whoa. Wow. Why is he wise because he planted the tree? I feel like... A tree that big? I, I question its ability to stay upright, especially with like a, a light wind. Also, a tree that tall, like there's only so much so high water can go up with like without active transport. That too. Yeah. Like gravity like there's only so much capillary action can do. Oh, they're dead. Oh. Huh? What is happening? Is this the whale that they're talking about before? <gasps> but we didn't see a fog before this. They went a different route maybe or a different time? Give him the Mitya. Oh my god. Don't don't start startle it. Ew, it that sounded like a Godzilla roar kinda. Where did the whale come from? What happened? <laughs> what? It must have just like been crossing through at that time, I guess. Uh, they, they left earlier, I guess. I I think so. It must have just it was been just, unlucky. It was just chilling there, just riding by the soup. If Super didn't start startle, it would have just chilled. Uh I question that. Get, give it the phone. Put the put the phone in like the folds of his eye eyelids or something. Like just like leave it. Like, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting that it was flying. It looked like. Yeah. So a massive being like that definitely not propulsed via like using air wind, like using wind. Yeah, or anything. It have... it's magically driven somehow. Yeah, it has to be completely magical. Even even the change direction or anything like that, like unless there's... it's extremely, it's it's not dense at all. Maybe it's like density of like less than of a foam, and just like it's like a very strong yet um, light structure that just like floats in the air. Maybe I mean it is. It does shoot fog, so maybe it's like um, 
like a condensed frog. Like a I crystallized think. frog, almost like a thick. A yeah, crisp, yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting. Held together by magic, almost. Yeah, so it could be something like that. Who knows? I mean, I imagine it's probably just a, an actual whale. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they're called like mob beasts or whatever. Um, but yeah, so we had that, and then the tree again. I want to talk a little bit more about that too, because I mean, it's only you know, there's only so much soil that I can get nutrients from too. It's a really big tree. Like, where are, are its roots growing into the bedrock? Yeah. They have I mean, to be, because it's not going to be able to support itself just on the, the soil layer. That's true. If it does get in the bedrock, like, if it's dug itself deep into, like, the like like some rock structure or a tectonic plate, I, then it could hold itself up pretty well. Yeah. Barring the structural strength of wood. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, too. Because you're going to have... There's going to be a lot of force... I mean, it's got a big leaves and branches and everything. If there's if there's a decent wind, there's going to be a lot of force on it. But that being said, the volume is pretty thick. I mean, it has a really thick cross section as well, so it must be that's true. strong as well. Yeah, it's not it's not thin. It's very very thick. That's true. But yeah, the the nutrient transport and the water transport are the big things. But yeah. um, I mean, maintaining wood, like maintaining the core strength of the tree. I mean, it doesn't require that much material. Um, like. It's not like the tree's like giving off heat or like actively respirating. It's just sort of chilling there. And that's how trees can live yeah. for a long time. Well, of time. the thing is, though, if it's transporting stuff, you know, 600, 700 feet into the air, it, it, that is going to require a, a good amount of energy. Well, if it's actively, yeah, if, if, if I'm It right, has to actively yeah. do it. Yeah. But how, how tall are the, um, the redwood trees in California? Probably um, not nowhere near as tall. Probably two to three hundred feet, I would say, at the most. Uh, we could look up the tallest tree. They're probably at the upper limits of, like, capillary action. So, yeah, generally yeah. in trees, what's bringing... Generally what happens is, like, the leaves of a tree, are, like, open. There's, they have little holes called stomata that open and close. And then you lose water vapor through that. And then, generally, since they go to, like... And leaves, they have very small capillaries. Basically, there's... There's a driving force of surface tension to bring water from like the ground up to those leaves. But there's definitely yeah. an upper limit on how tall a tree can go. Is the higher imagine trying to suck liquid through a straw. So imagine a small straw, very easy to do. But if you've done an experiment where if you stuck multiple straws together, you know it's harder and harder to pull water through that straw. Yeah. What if it um I don't I don't know a ton about the phenomenon, but what if the the channels were much thinner. Would that help? Well, you you still have to fight gravity, right? That's true. Yeah, that, that's that's, true. that. That's why I think there's an upper limit. Like, okay, e even with a straw, but then also like having a, a pressure gradient through that thin channel would be very tough to maintain too, right? Because what liquid has to yeah. go up. So yeah, I mean, you do have a, a little bit of a a positive pressure gradient going upwards if you're really high. Oh, because of water. for low pressure yeah yeah i mean it's, it's not gonna be a ton the the tallest tree looks like it's um three hundred and eighty feet so that's pretty tall i mean i don't know how tall this thing is this thing could have been you know over a mile tall it looks really tall okay um so let's see of livescience.com they say there is an upper limit for how tall trees can get because there are two main opposing forces that affect the tree's height. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so on, other, on one hand, the taller you are, the more you can like get away from competition from other trees and get more light. But the taller, the higher you are, the gravity makes it harder to haul water upwards from the roots of the canopy. So our theory is yeah. correct. So this is by... University of Northern Arizona. Um, you know what would be interesting? Yeah. If, since it's so, it's so big, um, if, like, a little bit of motion from, like, the wind, it could, like, harness that to, to pump. Oh, like, have, like, one-way valves that, like, close and open almost? Yeah. That would be very yeah. cool, yeah. I think like, that would be pretty neat. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I did have an idea once where I, I think I posed it to like our graduate school class and 
and no one really took to the idea, but I'm going to pose it again now. But what if you, de- you deconstructed a tree? Like, you cut a tree in half and, like, put one tree, like, way off somewhere, and you had a pump connecting, like... There's two parts of the tree. There's the phloem and the xylem. The flow, uh, uh Xylem pumps water, phloem pumps food, I think. But basically, you just have a pump moving the stuff from the roots to the tree and then backwards. So you have like a you have massive tubes connecting a tree together. There yeah, but it's very thin, right? Um I mean I guess you I, yeah, I guess you just that like simple. But yeah. It, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. I mean uh, <laughs> why are we doing this? Uh just because we can. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's um, point. But maybe that that's a way to like get above that height limit that theoretical height limit because if you like insert a pump halfway through you can like uh give the tree more driving pressure to go up higher yeah i mean i think it's gonna have to have some sort of pumps whether they're active or um more passive like maybe with the the wind or something like that and i don't i can't imagine any other way but yeah but- in a way that is still an active pumping system right using using external forces to move the liquid yeah. but and then guess, we're, I, I, we're also I, discounting I, magic yeah i guess i guess i mean active in the sense that like the tree's not necessarily spending its own energy to do it i see i see yeah still still i guess active <laughs> but yeah if they do have one way if the tree can like develop one way valves in its phloem and xylem to like pump i think that would be pretty huge yeah like you could imagine like this is a part of the tree, and then the wood squishes the tree like this, and it like squeezes everything up. Yeah, and that's like, what I was kind of thinking, something like that. Yeah, and then it brings them like with like uh, it, it's almost like what what's that motion that your esophagus uses to peristalsis? I think I don't know what it's called, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it, but it, it's a way that like your body moves food down your digestive tract. The tree could yeah. use similar technology, similar yeah. biology. <laughs> yeah. not technology <laughs> similar similar ideas I guess. <laughs> um yeah i mean so i i can't imagine any other way unless it literally had its own its own sort of pumps like sacks or something yeah um and but you know at, at that point it's going to need a lot of different nu- nutritions as well um uh, probably more more salts or something i imagine to do what to maintain that the structure yeah to work its pump basically it's active yeah pump. <clears throat> i guess depending on how they did it as well yeah um, but maybe it maybe it only need one place to have a pump right it's like you can get up to 400 feet so once you're at 400 feet you induce a pump at like the whole ring of the tree the whole cross section of the tree is like a pump layer and then you restart oh. That'd be interesting. It would be hard to, like, biologically plan that, but yeah, no. So cool. If evolution, it'd be very hard for evolution to make that happen. For sure. Yeah, it's like how how does it? I mean, I guess it wouldn't be that hard because I guess it would know when it, when the pump starts or like when like natural capillary reaction stops working, and it could just know to develop the pump at that point. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. If, when the well runs dry, I guess it re- yeah. creates a pump. Yeah. No, that would that would be a cool technology because like you could imagine like what what are typical I, I we're not biologists, so we don't really know. I, I know aquaporins are like pores in cells that let water through. I don't know about active pumps though. I do know like yeah. I mean I think freshwater fish or salt saltwater fish have to have some sort of mechanism to let get salt out or let water in. Yeah. I mean, for for plants, I don't know how it would work. I mean, to me, it just makes sense to just compress and close the valve, kind of like what we were talking about with the with the wind, but just you know, doing it on its own. That's true. I I, I have a feeling like I'm maybe a molecular. It, it's it's hard for plants to develop like active movement, right? I mean, we have like Venus flytraps. I guess over time, plants do move, like they like to aim toward the sun. But something yeah. so macroscopic and fast, like pumping, seems yeah. I, it, it would probably be difficult, but I mean, it's probably a magical, magical That's true. plant too. And it could even be intelligent. Who knows? That's true. I mean, if it's that big and there's a massive flying whale near it, I mean, probably would yeah. be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
All right. Anyway, <laughs> you guys like the video, make sure you like it. If you really like it, subscribe. All right. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.